Hi, I'm Shalane, this is Dean, and we are Grassroots, Grassroots Living. Living. And this is how we live our love. Hi friends, we're so glad that you are with us. Um, I'm super glad to be back. I don't look my best self today. Uh, since I had surgery about a week and a half ago and a lot of you guys have been praying for me and so my healing feels really slow but it's um, you know I'm making progress and I'm just glad to be back with you guys so hi I'm glad to, yeah. <laughs> glad to be here and glad you're here you want to tell them where we're going today you know um, we decided to pick something fun um, something that we did over the last summer uh, because I know a lot of us are kind of anxious to get out and about and uh, we, we really got to thinking of all the tours that we did in our little trip which one was the most fun here in the United States and it was uh, a little tour to a maple syrup farm yeah so it was a little um, a farm called Baird Farms in New no Vermont, Vermont. Yeah. in Vermont we'll show you a little map of it and we will link them below of course um, so, so yeah, it was just a little tour we took. It was a little bit unexpected, um, a little bit off the beaten path. We enjoyed it so much and just thought we'd share that with you. So let's go find out about maple syrup. <laughs> The syrup they'll try comes from this hillside we're looking at. This little rise here, all the way over there's kind of a dip or a saddle in the in the ridge over there. We tap trees over there, um, and then we tap another six thousand plus taps on on this side. It all gets piped and pumped in tubes to this location. So you drove past the dip in the road. There's a big pile of wood, and there's like a shed on the other side. That's a pump house. Um, so there's lines, no more buckets on this farm, all tubing. Um, that's, what, that's what I picture, is like they have the taps and there's just buckets that hang on it and, and you have to go and gather them all. Sure, and that's yeah. what most people picture. And that's what most of the sugaring on this farm uh, happened for years and years and years with buckets that look like this. So you, you, have a, you have a spout, you know, and the spout hangs in the hole of the bucket, right? And the, the bucket kind of leans against the tree and it dips into the tree. Um, it'll make more sense. I have a little demo table in there. Maybe we should go over there and I'll okay. explain the rest. Um, yeah, now in the... And so traditionally in Vermont, you know, think like late 1700s, through the 1800s, they used buckets, they used wooden buckets, and they used tin buckets and galvanized buckets, like the one you saw or that you see on a Norman Rockwell postcard. Um, and now, and the, and back then, you you would have like a, a big old group of folks, and you would go out in the woods, and you'd have like a sugar camp, where you'd all like kind of live out there for the month of March. Uh, sugaring happens in the late winter, early spring. That's when we make maple syrup. We're not making maple syrup. Right. Uh, today. Uh, February or so, is that about? Yeah, so fe we're really making syrup here between mid-February and mid-April. And then, the, you know, the higher up, closer to Quebec you go, the, the later the season starts, the later it goes. Okay. Um, but we're usually all, we're definitely all cleaned up here by, by the beginning of May. Um, so, you know, it's all tubing now, <laughs> which is less uh, romantic looking, but it makes life a lot easier. Uh, there's actually 80 miles of this stuff in the woods. I was going to say, so, like hill a, so between here and that and hill. Yeah. There's just these real long lines of green tube. Green tube or blue tube, it calls in, comes in all the colors of the rainbow. Um, and it's all, you know, it's wrapped between the trees, and then it, it goes down to larger tubes that hold higher capacities. These are suspended uh, in the air, like waist height, to stay out of the snow. Um, the sap freezes mm -hmm. in these overnight, right? Mm -hmm. And that, in come morning, it'll thaw out again. But you need the lines elevated so they stay out of the snow, so they, they will thaw out. And then they're all on a slope, as you can imagine, 
draining down to some central tank. Um, in our case, those pump houses. Uh, so a lot of what I do is... How many tanks do you have throughout there? Well, there's only two pump houses that feed these 12,000 taps. Um, and then it all gets the, the lines that are pumping up through there's seven pipes right here, these black water lines they almost look like through the concrete over here. Those lines are going to different tanks. There's, there's 20,000 gallons of storage here. There's tanks up there. There's two big tanks here we can look at and tanks on the other side of the wall. Um, but real quick about the, maybe we should pause on the trees before I get too distracted okay. with the tanks. You know, we, we tap these trees in January. And it's There's all three about the weather spring. dynamic too. You need cold enough weather and warm enough, like a swing in temperatures to create a sap run or sap flow. So there's sap in the tree all, all year round. It's going up and down the tree in this part of the tree, the xylem. But the cooling and the cold, the freezing and thawing temperatures creates a, a pressure dynamic. You know, as the sap moves up and down the tree, you, you have this essentially a spigot plugged into that channel, which allows the sap to flow and drip out of uh, essentially an open wound you've created. Um, so this is what it looks like. Yeah, so those are old, well, that's a spout we use today, but yeah, these are all spouts that, that have been used on the farm of different shapes and sizes. Fancy ones with little check valves, so it's one directional. This also has a check valve, or old ones where, like an old wooden spout, right? Um, yeah, cool, right? Um, and so, uh, we tap all the trees. We turn on pumps when it's going, so it's like a vac oh, the whole system becomes under vacuum or I'm under sure. pressure, so it's like the tool they use in the dentist's office, right, to flush your mouth clean. Um, we get twice as much sap that way. So a lot of what I do is I maintain that tubing system, but I'm looking for leaks, right? Because this tubing system can leak anywhere. It can leak here, it can leave at, leak at little fittings or little T's, little Y's. Um, it's like needles and haystacks. Um, I can imagine what 80 miles of... Or whatever sure. you just said with keeps us busy, keeps <laughs> us moving along. Um, and then there's always someone here in the sugar house too, monitoring things and, and dealing with the sap. So just for context, in that two month period of time last year, we collected 350,000 gallons of sap and that boiled down to about 6,500 gallons of, of, of syrup, finished syrup. So sap, when it comes out of the tree, it's not like pine pitch, right? It's mostly liquid, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, sugar water. It's 2% sugar, 98% water. It, you know, it doesn't look brown or anything, you know, it's, it's mostly I've heard translucent. It's like a 50 to 1 that you have to boil out. Kind of. Essentially, yeah, on average, yeah. So these are 40 gallon barrels, right? So you can imagine maybe like this much sap to make a, a gallon of syrup. Wow. You can imagine a, a gallon of milk in your head or something. Um, so let's look at these tanks and then we'll get an idea at the bottom and I'll tell you about boiling. And then we can, we can try the grades. If you talk about what makes the different grades. Just watch your step, there's a little... Um, Is, are the grades simply made by boiling out more or less? Like diluting it? Yeah, no, a lot of people think that uh, what makes the grades is the, the chemistry of the sap. The short answer, the answer people tell Taurus is that early in the season you make a light syrup, late in the season you make a dark syrup. Oh, really? And that's generally true, you know, as, as the season moves along, the, the syrup gets darker and stronger in flavor. A lighter syrup's not better than a darker syrup, but they're just different. Um, what happens is that the sap is always changing, the amount of sugar content is changing, but also the, the sugars inside the sap are changing. So even though they're all the same amount of sweetness, they've all been boiled down the same amount, they result in quite different flavors. Um, so like, if the average is 2%, Sugar, does it sometimes go to five and sometimes go to one? Or, or? We wish it went to five. <laughs> um, if, if it's, if a bucket, you'll get a lot sweeter sap for a number of reasons, it's slowly dripping into a bucket. Um, whereas with the vacuum, we're really moving along the liquid um, and it, we're averaging usually like one and a half to two here. Um, but at the end of the season, what stops us, this is important, what stops us from sugaring, because otherwise we'd be sugaring right now, because we love to sugar, the, the tr that wound we've created and the tree starts to dry up, right? It's just like if you cut yourself on platelets, rest of your cut and the, your wound's healing up, the tree is doing the same thing, it's compartmentalizing that damage, so it starts dripping out of the tree less on a warm bed. 
And then the what does drip out becomes less sugar. It can dip down to like half a percent sugar. So as you can imagine, then it you would take it would take twice as much sap, right, to make a gallon of syrup if it's less sugar. Because all finished syrup is the same sugar content, 66.9% sugar, or about two-thirds sugar. Um, so is it two-thirds sugar and the rest is sap water? Sap water, yeah, mostly water, but there's other things in syrup too, like antioxidants and minerals. Um, so I told you, you know, all that syrup on my pancakes was healthy. So for good for you. <laughs> it is good for you. Um, in moderation, all things in moderation. It's, it's, it's used in a lot of water filtering. Right? It's water filtering. Yeah. So we pull water out of clean water out of sap in order to boil it less, which is a trick people started doing maybe 20 years ago. It, it allows you to burn a lot less fuel. Um, so uh, so any pure water that's in the sap. You take out before you even put it in there to burn off just the, the non-sugary stuff. Essentially, no. yeah. So the, you know, there's yeah. maple mustards, maple hot sauces, as you see, and Heinz and Hunts puts a lot of corn syrup in their ketchup. Yes. It's about half corn syrup if you've looked at the, the ingredients of a Heinz nice. bottle anytime recently. And so uh, this is this is ketchup we make from scratch, and it's only sweetened with with dark syrup. So the, the combination of tomatoes and maple might, might be off-putting at first, but it, people tend to like it. It's almost halfway to a barbecue sauce in terms of, it, you know, it's got, a lot of, it's got a lot of body, but it also has like a good amount of like acidity and tang and bite from, from a dark syrup. And but do you have a sample of this too? Um, we should have samples of everything. I, I gotta try it. I know, I would love to try it. One more. Um, and so you only made a little bit of light syrup. Now people are making syrup faster than they ever did before. So you, you, if you walked away, if you wanted to buy a barrel today, which we might be able to fit, <laughs> you, they, they're all the same price. Um, okay, what's the, is this the darkest dark? That's the darkest dark, which some people find a little bit too aggressive because it almost has a, a bite on the end I, of it. I gotta try it. Um, this is something I've never seen in a store then, right? Uh, you might, depending on... I mean, on like a Walmart, that would sort of... Something. Most Walmarts, most Walmarts either have like, uh, amber or dark, these two middle grades. Part of it is, it's all personal preference, but part of it is also like, how you're using it. Like if you're grilling a lot, or doing like a heavy marinade, you know, a darker syrup will bleed through a flavor more. Whereas like a, if you used a really light syrup, it would be harder for you to catch a maple flavor. Yes. Almost, if you're, any of the confectionery purposes or granulated sugar, almost all use a lighter syrup because it crystallizes better. It's hard to make sugar out of dark syrup because it wants to, it doesn't want to crystallize. Yeah. The, with the nerdy answer, the nerdy answer about the grades is that the trees make sucrose. These, these are sugar maple trees right here. It's, the trees are making sucrose through photosynthesis. As the sap leaves the tree in the form of sucrose, it's breaking down to simpler sugars. It's mostly breaking down to fructose and glucose. Those are the main sugars in syrup, just like they're on honey. Yeah. Honey has fructose and glucose. It's not... We used to have a beehive, so... Okay, sure, yeah. So the relationship, the ratio of fructose to glucose is important in maple syrup. And the, the higher the inverted glucose count is, which generally happens as the season progresses, as the sugars break down more in warmer weather and the tree chemistry changes, results in a darker, stronger syrup. And so the higher the inverted glucose count, the harder it is for a syrup to crystallize, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. it does make These sense. are different. So the new thing people are doing with syrup, the, the foodie thing to do is to infuse syrup. You see a lot of like bourbon barrel syrups on the market or vanilla syrups. And so these syrups are infused with things off this farm. This is infused with spruce tips that we collected oh. from spruce trees. So the bright oh. green grows on, yeah, which cool, they cool, do cool, in cool, certain cool. parts of like Pacific Northwest or up to Alaska, if you've ever been up there. Well, any maple tree work or does it have to be a sugar maple tree? <laughs> I mean, yes, any tree will work. Sugar, ma sugar makers also tap red maples now. Depending on where you go in the country, people will also tap like um, swampier species like striped maple or Norway maple. I mean, you wouldn't want to tap like a little Japanese maple because of the, the way the Japanese maples grow. But like in parts of Japan and Korea, they tap maple trees. They don't make syrup, but they'll, they'll, they'll 
collect the sap, like we said before, and drink it like a like a tonic. Mm. Yeah. I'm chopping now. Okay. Okay. Don't stop. <laughs> There was actually so much more footage than you did not that you did not see, and he was so kind and so helpful. Um, just a lot of fun, so much fun. So if you ever have a chance to do that, um, do it. It was awesome. And the the maple syrup that they had was incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. Their their uh, ketchup, which was I don't know how to describe it. It was almost a, it was it was a a maple sugar ketchup. Yeah. Um, absolutely superb. I love it so much. I would encourage you to look them up, uh, Mary Farms. Uh, maybe we can put something down in the description. Yeah, like I said, we're going to link it below and you can go there and shop and, you know, get your own syrup and ketchup and, and different things because it really is quality. It really is. Uh, yeah. And we love to support them. You know, you always love to support a small local business like that. Sure. So, um, are we good? We're good. Okay. Um, if you're new here, if you just stop by to see the whole maple syrup thing, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you with us. We um, show up here every Tuesday night and talk with our friends and share a fun video. And um, so yeah, like and subscribe and share. We'd love to have, we always love to have new friends. So until next week, this is Grassroots Living, reminding you to get down to the grassroots of what makes you happy and live your love. We're thinking of it. We'll catch you next week. Peace out. <laughs>